Hear that push? What is it? Just another narrow body aircraft. Hey, my atoms are shaking. Strange. It sounds far, but I bet my last proton that beast is much closer than you think. Hold on, people. It's a leap-powered aircraft. A leap into the unknown. What on earth is a leap? Something you sure haven't seen before. Everybody get ready. We're going in. Someone please tell me what just happened? Sure. The engine makes a plane move forward. Thrust is produced by air being pulled in by the fan blades. Then this air is ejected at greater speed through the exhaust, creating the required push and force. This is a principle of Newton's law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So how is this possible? Gentle souls, come with me to the bypass. Extreme sport freaks, with me, we'll hit the compressors, combustor, and turbines. The LEAP is a high bypass ratio engine, which means that a large amount of air bypasses the core of the engine to be ejected directly into the exhaust stream. The fan acts like a propeller. Its curved rotating blades accelerate the airflow into the engine. Lighter composite materials provide better efficiency and resistance. Here come the compressors. Get ready. Things are going to heat up. Feel that? It's the low-pressure compressor squeezing us. Now, the high-pressure compressors. You're gonna feel the difference. Ultra-efficient compressors deliver optimum air pressure and temperature conditions for combustion. It's rising up now. Let's get toasted! Gentlemen, meet your kerosene counterparts. These guys are gonna light up your day. Already? We usually mingle inside. Not anymore. I thought there'd be more of you. Normally, yes, but in this engine, fewer of us are needed. This little kerosene particle is right. The LEAP engine burns less fuel than former engines. In addition, the fuel nozzles mix fuel and air before they enter the combustor, creating a homogeneous mixture that minimizes the peak temperature during combustion. This technology significantly reduces emissions. Okay, let's go. The combustion chamber. This is the heart of the engine, where energy is created through combustion of fuel and compressed air. Are you ready? Here comes the final blast. What a boost. Where are we now? Turbines. Let's transfer our energy to them. This is the last extreme stage before we join the soft team. Enjoy. Advanced material and aerodynamics make the turbines much more efficient and durable. The pressure and speed of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and its shaft, which in turn drives the compressor and fan. Come on guys, don't hang around. We alone are responsible for 90% of the thrust from this baby. Here come those adrenaline junkies. So, how was it? Fast! Hot and fantastic. What a trip! Are you kidding me? It was us in the primary flow that did most of the job. Not exactly, kid. It's teamwork. We definitely need each other. We provided the energy to drive the engine, and they provided most of the thrust to make the aircraft move forward. Hey, boss. Sounds like we're in luck today. You said it. It's game on again, boys. Let's go. Okay, now we're in the center. Okay, we're climbing. It would take 16 of these 20,000 litre trucks to fill the A380. Where does all this fuel go? In the wings, you say? Okay, let's take a look at the wings and you tell me where you think it all goes. This is the A380 wing. Pretty huge. Let's put a fuel truck next to it. And another. And another. And another. And four more. Just for this wing. Another eight go into the other wing. Can you see what I'm saying? Now let's take a look at the wings on these aircraft. This is the new Dreamliner taking off in a spectacular fashion. Observe the thickness of the wings. How many fuel trucks would fit in those wings? OK, let's take a look at the fill rate. To fully fill the A380 takes approximately 45 minutes. 
To fill an Olympic sized swimming pool takes about four days. That is two and a half million liters of water. The capacity of the A380 is about 8% of the volume. 8% of 96 hours is 7.6 hours. That's a lot longer than 45 minutes. So maybe the filling equipment is much faster for a plane. Let's take a look. This is filling a swimming pool. And this is filling an aircraft. To fill the tanks of an A380 in 45 minutes, you would have to have a pump and a hose that could pump 7,189 litres of fuel per minute. Let's look at something that pumps at about half that speed. Now the plane, now the fire hose. Don't you think that filling that wing with that sort of pressure would just rip a hole right through the top? It's only made of aluminium. Is that using the vortex idea on an aircraft it will literally suck its way through the ether rather than thrusting against the air molecules. Schauberger's central approach here was the principle of matter transformation. The elements of the air, particulate matter and gases are converted in this repulsator. One part escapes through the ring rotator and the radiation energy, Schauberger talks about synthesis electricity, is emitted through the central axis. The repulsin creates a biological vacuum along the axis in front of it, into which the aeroplane is sucked. 